he's, he does have lots of interesting ideas, uh, but uh, and he's, he's presented a number of times uh, to TED, so um, which, which you all do know about. And so his plan is to talk for 30, 40 minutes or so. And uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, uh, hit him with all you got afterwards. Uh, ask him questions that he can answer. Because uh, in the same way that uh, uh, you, know, you guys practicing doing presentations here, as good as I'm, I'm sure he is, uh, uh, he's experimenting with a new format uh, and with some new ideas. So having a chance for you guys to, to, to shred them to bits. This is the kind of you know, open and friendly environment I like to do in here. Um, uh, it's certainly good in the long run. Uh, so, so do that. Uh, and if, uh, uh, if, if you don't have any other questions and you happen to be part of the Amritsar group, he's been to Amritsar. So, uh, um, so he knows uh, he knows more about it on the ground than the rest of us. So you can uh, ask him about that too. Um, so that's it. I'll leave it over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Cus, for the uh, introduction. And uh, yeah, welcome to all of you. So you know, as you guys probably noticed, actually, first of all, I'd like to say it's a massive honor to speak here at Korea University. Really, you know. Uh, as you guys notice, I'm not much older than you guys, you know, which is probably from years actually. So before I begin the talk, I just want to quickly share some pieces of information, two pieces of information that my mentors have always emphasized to me. Which is first, that you got to travel a lot, you got to travel the whole world, you got to go to hundreds of cities, literally, to earn a real global perspective. Right? Because um, the great spy novelist John Le Carre once said, a desk is a dangerous place from which to view the world. And a lot of people do that. A lot of people just you know, stay at their desk and research. And, and even these so-called global experts that I actually meet a lot, you know, they just research a lot and they think they have a little perspective at their desk. No, you got to travel a lot with your eyes wide open. Right? And another thing I'd like to tell you guys, I got, you guys are young, you know, if you're looking for opportunities you know, uh, for your career or otherwise, just remember that opportunities flow through people. They're attached to people. So when you're looking for opportunities, you're really looking for interesting people or interesting person. Right? And needless to say, cities are full of interesting people. Or, you know, so it's up to you to really tap into the people scape of cities to gain really great, great opportunities. So speaking of cities, uh, my talk today is called Cities Make the World Go Around. They really do. And uh, you know, see, cities are really the engines that drive world economy, human culture, and overall shape the lives of billions and billions of people around the world, right? And not to mention, 70% of the world population will be living in cities uh, by the year 2050, and or 6 billion people, which includes all the skilled talents in the world like yourselves. So if you're not already living in cities, then you probably will. Uh, right now it's over 50%. And so, now it happens that the world is organized in the context of nation states, right? Uh, and that's how our mental maps are, are shaped as well. When we think about the world, we think about countries, right? But the thing is that globalization has been rapidly evaporating and dissolving these national borders. And as a result, sovereignty or, or, or national limits or parameters matter less and less in our world. So, a more up-to-date and useful way of viewing the world, I believe, is through what I call an inter-subnational lens or framework or paradigm. International means, see, the word international means among and between nations, but we live in a world that is among and between cities now, right? It's a city-dominated world. And so, let's be phrase makers. Let's call it an inter-civic world or inter-urban world. I like to call it inter-subnational world, right? And so if you look at trade, commerce, travel, and so on and so forth, it is between cities now. Even you guys, you guys come to Seoul to study, right? Even education is between cities. Most, uh, most universities in the world are located in cities. So it's not a flat world, you know, as Thomas Freeman has popularized, you know, which is a great, great book, by the way. You know, but rather, it's a spiky world, as Richard Florida or uh, 
and offers its own value to talk about. Right? Because social economic activity and talents, like yourselves, are highly concentrated in only certain locations around the world. Right? So it's a spiky world, not a flat world. And so let me, this leads me to declare that there is no such thing as a national economy, but rather a network of city economies that act on the global stage. For instance, we've all heard about the so-called BRIC countries, right? And many of their emerging nations. It's always on the news, the BRIC countries and so on. But far less appreciated and recognized are these city regions within these countries that have actually fueled and defined their social and economic prosperity. And by the way, this is the